good morning everybody and welcome to our course on introduction to mechanical micro machining in the last class we have seen uh, some of the difference between the conventional micro machining center or conventional micro machining processes and there are two different processes one is the mems based processes and other one is the precision processes so now we have seen that how those differences are there and those differences are mostly related to the so there is the difference between micro machining and mems based processes and this mems means micro electromechanical system micro electro mechanical system under difference was same micro machining center and precision machining so basic difference here that these components are mostly 2d components and 2d or 2.5d components while here you can create a pure 3d or the actual 3d components here the size of the component was very large may be in meter while here it is mostly in the tens or the hundreds of the micron so that thing we have covered in the last class and then we move to the what are the operator skill and sensing in the micro machining required because when you operate a machine at a micro scale or at a conventional scale there are lot of differences available so we have to understand that what things you have to consider when you operate a micro machine so it was the skill based human hands and human sense cannot assist the process the way they do in the macro region because when you operate a micro machine macro machine that means conventional machining at that time you can hear lot of noise also if process is not working fine you can understand by voice that something is going wrong but that is not possible in the conventional processes in micro machining processes so here you have to understand processes in terms of some basic idea that if you set this speed feed and depth of cut with respect to uh, conventional tool or the material property that which material you are machining and which tool you are using for that depending on that you have to trial do trial and error and then find out what is the reasonable lead uh, particular range by which you can do proper machining because your ear and i will not help you in understanding to find out the what are the problems in the machining joint so here we have seen some of the things that how these things are different in macro machining that means conventional machining manual skills are very important or valuable because when you operate any machine at this particular uh, region in this case then it is very important so here this valuable things how it is important because once a person use one machine for a longer time he can understand that machine very well even a small noise coming out of the machine will tell you that how what is happening and what is wrong going on in the machining process detection a problem by hearing because when you operate a machine you will find different type of noise maybe the because of the chatter also or the tool and workpiece contact are not very perfect or not uniform then you can get different type of noise and then if the spindle is not properly working or not fixed tool with the tool holder then also it will create some noise so those things can be detected very easily in micro machining then it is possible to correct the setup because when you operate any machine and if you find some uh, noise or something here 
at that time it is possible because any everything is visible and you can actually do correction during process. So, you can save a work piece for if it is not completely degraded. So, that is possible in the micro machine. But if you consider the micro machining operation then there are problems because this cannot be benefit from the kind of human element because the way we are understanding this particular thing that by hearing or by by hearing or understanding the different type of fume also sometimes what happened that if the temperature is very very high you can get different type of fumes also. So, by just smelling the things also you can understand that the temperature is very very high or there is an aggressive interaction between the tool and the workpiece. But those things is not possible here there are reasons because the tool size is very very small even it is difficult to detect by naked eye there is another thing the cutting is completely uh, underneath the tool. So, even you cannot see the whether tool is in contact with the workpiece or not. So, that are the problems. Then tool is very very small scale. So, that is very difficult even tool is not possible to see and workpiece is also difficult to locate at that time. No change in the sound of the cut because even if it is machining or it is not machining you cannot differentiate that what is happening there because everything is very very small scale and that is the problem what is difficult to understand in the micro machining. Any deviation in the dimensions of the setup is probably too fine for a any human tweak. So, even small dimension is suppose you want to do a uh, straight cut by a end milling cutter, but you are end up with a some type of a non straight cut suppose now this is your milling cutter. and this is your work piece and you want to do a cutting of this particular slot. Now, this is our objective. Now, consider the tool is moving from ear to ear then it will plunge inside the work piece and then it will move in this direction and once reaching here again it will be retracted. Now, this is the way it will do machining. Now, considering the size of the cutting tool, now when it is plunging inside it and by chance it is broken and unluckily if you are not using any type of sensors here, then you will not get any information whether tool is present or not. So, what we generally do we continue the process and we thought that that machining is continuous and it is uniformly done and then we retract the tool and then we reach here at that time we can understand that tool is broken at this location. So, what we have done that we have wasted this much amount of time. time waste due to not knowing the tool condition. So, it may happen many times in this case. So, what we need? We need cameras, we need force sensors, we need some accelerometer which will tell you when the tool is in contact with the surface because when there is a contact at that time there are forces generated let it be at a smaller scale, but you will definitely get some signature from the force measurement instrument. And if you do not get any information that means, we can either know this tool is broken or there is no contact between the tool and the workpiece. So, this is the case of the tool broken. Now, consider the tool is completely intact, but another problem is there that you your workpiece is not completely flat because when you want to do machining at a micro scale you have to also make sure that the both the surfaces that means at least this surface it is flat with the fixture wherever you are mounting it so flatness is important now if it is not flat and it is at consider may be at a 1 degree or 2 degree, 1 degree taper. Now, what it will do? 
that whenever there is a taper, so this is little bit inclined in the top part. So, now consider that your workpiece is located like this and this is the angle 1 degree and your cutting tool is here again your objective is to cut something like this, but instead of what we are getting here we will get something this cut will be the same, but instead of that whatever is this angle that angle will be reflected here. So, these are the problems. So, now not only the condition of the workpiece and the tool we have to also make sure the fixturing arrangement of the tool. So, what are the fixturing that how you are mounting the workpiece and the tool that is also important in this particular case. So, now you can understand that whenever there are some problems like this you have to think at a microscopic level because otherwise there are problems associated with it and at the end you are wasting the time also many times tool is also broken because of this additional load it has to taken up. Now, you can consider the here the total material removal or the contact zone is very small, but here that particular angle it will increase the total load on the tool and that is not counted when we have designed the speed feed and depth of cut or when we are decided to use those particular parameter setting. So, at that time because of the load increase it may break also and at the end the whole tool as well as workpiece will be in the damage zone. So, these are the problems associated with this part. Now, before we go into the actual machining operation what we have to understand here that what things we have to remember when you switch over to the micro machining zone. Whenever you use a conventional machining zone or conventional machining processes we know that which way we have to operate the machine what things you have to clean around the surface once the operation is over what we have to do how to clean the component as well as tool everything is very very clear in this case. But here now what is problem that once the operation is over removal of the component itself is very difficult because you have to also understand that where machining is being taken place. Another thing that once the operation is over workpiece removal is one part tool removal is another part. Again you have to cross check both the things that whether tool has any life or not can you use the same tool for the next operation or not. So, there are many things you have to understand or you have to actually inculcate so that you can use a micro machine effectively and you can actually extend the total lifespan of the machine because it is not only the workpiece tool material as well as the uh, machine tool, but operator also play important role on how to manage or how to maintain the machining condition around the workpiece around the tool and around the machine itself. So, let us see that what are those different conditions or different habits which we have to improve so that we can use the machine effectively. So, first thing is the procedure for tools, tool length setting and other steps are different here because when you see about procedure of setup, setup means that how to set up of the workpiece that means once you mount the workpiece you have to find what is the z0, what is x0, y0 from where you start the machining operation. And there is the tool length setting when you operate a machine now consider let us take one example here. Now, this is your workpiece blank and this is your tool. Now, here at the center of this you want to do a drilling operation hollow drill we do not want to go through it. So, now first thing that we have to find out the what is this distance. So, this is x distance and this is y distance and wherever it is here at that time when it is touches the surface it becomes a z 0 direction. Now, when before starting that we have to understand what is the location of our cutting tool and where actually we want to move that cutting tool to the workpiece. So, for finding that particular thing first thing that we have to find out the what is the center of this particular job then only you can plunge the end mill cutter or the 
creating a slot or creating a one type of uh, circular uh, pocket. So, here finding x y what we have to do that first thing that you have to find out what is this edge you have to move this cutting tool to this location and when it is touches the surface you consider this one as a x 0 same way you have to move this cutting tool to the this direction on this side and then when it is touches it will consider as a this one is x 0 and this one is y 0 and then you know that where is this location. So, this is about the x and y setting. Now, second question is how to set z 0. Mostly people what to do that they gradually move this particular tool down to the surface and they put a piece of a paper with a known thickness there we put one piece of a paper. of non thickness and then we gradually move this tool down over this particular piece and then we move this piece move up here in there and when it is touches the surface you are not able to move this paper very easily. So, this is the very very uh, uh, general way to do this thing, but it may not be very very accurate. But here it will give you some idea that how much when it is touching the surface at that time you have to also add this much amount of thickness of that and then you consider that thing as a z 0. So, now all things are set up because when you are uh, drilling or creating a pocket of a shallow hole because here the depth also important. So, depth of the hole hole z is equal to minus 10 mm consider we are thinking about that. So, and this thickness is 15 mm. So, it is a shallow hole. So, shallow pocket. So, once all things are done then what you have to do you have to retract this tool little bit up then move into x up to this dimension to the center and then move y up to this. So, your tool will be located at this location and then you create a hole or the pocket with a minus 10 millimeter of a depth. So, this is the routine way of doing this thing other than that Right now, there are sensors available which will find out the what is the total length projected length of the cutting tool and then it will also find out by means of touch probe. So, those are the highly sophisticated instruments which can be used for micro machining, but it mostly we do not use for the normal machining because here few micron here and there will not make much difference in the machining path. But when you are going with this particular micro machining, then you need a sensor. So, those things are called the touch probe. Touch probes for measurement of tool diameter tool length workpiece 0. that means it is z equal to 0 location and etcetera there may be some other applications also, but these are the main application. So, now how this touch probe works those touch probes are instead of this cutting tool what we do that we use those touch probe here and there is a small ball located here and when it will move up and down then there are some uh, light available here that light will uh, blink and once blinking is over machine control will understand that it has touched at some location. Once touching is over at that time it will find out or it will remember that location. Now, suppose this is the circle and you want to find out the what is the center of this particular circle. So, now what we have to do now let us uh, do a cross section here let me remove all these things. Now, this is the side view of the cavity, this is the side view and when you see from the top, now let us see this circle only. Now, 
this is the circle and this is the remaining part. Now, what we have to do our objective is with reference to the circle center we want to drill two holes here. We do not want to take reference of x direction or the y direction, but we want to go with reference to the circle center. Now, for doing this thing first we have to find out what is the circle uh, center is this. So, what, what this particular touch probe does? So, touch probe is something here. So, this is our uh, side view and this is the top view of the workpiece. So, touch probe is something like that and this will enter inside the hole, but it will not touch to the surface. So, now location of the touch probe consider this is the location of the touch probe here. So, it will gradually move in this direction and once it is touching the surface it will identify what is that coordinate. So, now let us see here. So, this is x direction, this is y direction and this one is the z direction. this minus. So, it is touching at this direction at that time it will remember what is the x dimension here. Then from that location it will go to this location so, and then it will find out what is the center of this location. Center of total x travel. So, it will reach to that particular middle portion then it will move into the y direction touch to this location find out that what is this particular coordinate of the y then it will move to the other extreme of the y find out what is this position and then it will find out the what is the center or the midpoint of the of the y travel. So, this is the center of this x and then this is sensor. So, you will find out what is the center of the particular workpiece or particular hole. So, once it is done at that time you consider this one as a this particular center as a is a x 0, y 0 and then you find out that from there how much is this distance located, how much is this distance located. So, this is the use of a particular touch probe in that direction that is finding out the diameter of the hole when this and you can also find out what is the z that when it is touching this particular surface at that time it will sense that thing the touching is very gentle and this sensor is enough to understand that it is minutely touch the surface and once it is touching the surface you consider this one as a z0. So, earlier case was the manual case by which you put the paper and then understand that how much is the z direction, but this is the fully automated and more reliable system. So, that you can get the required dimension in the micro machining zone. Then the formula for machining parameters mostly and rule of thumb and expectation that apply in average shop often do not apply here. Now, what does it mean that what are the machine parameter that first what we do here that first we know that what is the tool workpiece combination workpiece material combination. And based on that what we decide that we decide depth of cut feed and feed rate. And many times those things are standardized and which are well available into the literature and thumb of rule that means, if these are the particular uh, parameter you do not need to even look into the 
particular uh, database or anything data book you understand by means by your experience and you can find out what are the reasonably optimized parameter for particular workpiece and the tool material combination and you expect that the old things will work fine because you can see the operation very easily which is not possible in the micro machine so those things generally do not work here what you have to do here that when you do micro machining micro machining at that time you, what you have to do that you have to find out that this particular parameter setting by trial and error because nothing is available right now as you change the workpiece and tool material this particular setting will change and then you have to play around the parameters to find out what is the optimum level of this. Successful results are never guaranteed that is happens because we have seen earlier case that even if you continue operation and you do not know that whether your workpiece and the tool are in perfect position whether tool is broken or whether tool is in uh, reasonably good condition you cannot understand this thing. So, you have to find out the way to how to monitor or how you can visualize those things by means of camera or by means of some other sensor so that you can get the required results very easily. Predicting how cutting tool will perform is often impossible that we have seen in that class that suppose the tool is broken. So, that is performance of this particular tool is that tool is broken. Then run out of the tool. This thing we will discuss in more detail when uh, we discuss about the different component of the machine. These are the two things, then the tool wear. So, those things will create problem because everything is in a micron because when you are talking about the tool dimension, let us consider this is a 150 micron tool diameter. Then it is difficult to identify all these things very easily. So, sometimes several set of blocks need to be machined to yield one acceptable component. So, this is everything is trial and error because if you continue with a one particular setup and you understand that it is not working tool is broken then you note down those speed fit and depth of cut parameters and then you convert into that that this particular setting is not working with a particular tool and workpiece combination. Then you find out some other parameter settings. And then you again do the machining if you are lucky then you can get the required result if you are not then you again you have to set out some different parameter setting. So, in that case you have to machine and many components to find out one acceptable component and that is creating problem in the parts. So, let me finish this lecture here we will continue from the next slide in the next class thank you very much.